Hey, I, and this, you, people may want to check this out, your listeners. The best drill I've ever created, bar none. I've created a ton of stuff. I call it the goat drill. Greatest, greatest yeah. of all time, right? And what it is is a brain drill. Because here's the deal. If your brain is optimal, then you learn skill faster. So where I came up with it, it was originally came from a version of Infinity Walks, which is a basically a, somebody, let's say, looks at an object and they have a, f- a figure eight uh, perpendicular to the TV or whatever, or whatever they're looking at, and they walk in a figure eight pattern. So they never lose the vision of what they're looking at. Let's say it's a TV mm-hmm. or just an object. And when they're walking in that figure eight, they're always looking at it, so they're switching from the left to the right side of the brain, and it kind of balances the brain out. This was- Are, infi- they, are they facing the TV with their body, or are they- No, they're, they're walking ahead, straight ahead and, and, turn, and turning turn. their head, okay. yes. And if you look up Infinity Walks, it's on the internet. The original lady, uh, I forget her brief name, she's out of Buffalo, New York, she created this, and there's clinics on kids with behavioral problems that makes them, uh, there's clinics where they have kids go with behavioral problems, so it balances out their brain doing this this drill. So what I did was I actually put it on steroids per se. And I have my athletes. Now this, this is in, this is on my YouTube page again. It's all free. The go performance drill G O A T. If you look it up, you'll see people on there. I have a, like a, uh, um, you know, hula hoop laid down big one. The athletes now here, I'll just be brief. They're running through that while they're looking at an object. They're having a, the ball in their hand. They move it around their waist. They're running at high speeds. So like yep. just swapping hands. With a tennis ball, just as fast okay. as they can while they're running. They're doing math. So I'm yelling out yeah, numbers. Math at them. Jesus. Yep, I'm yelling out numbers. 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now they can't get them all. I don't care. And they're subtracting two or three or whatever number. I say, you're subtracting two, ready, set, go. And I'll say seven, nine, 10, 11. They're trying just to nail numbers while they're running as fast as they can, while they're watching an object. <laughs> okay. And now look, and I throw a bunch of other things in there too, where I put somebody in the circle and as they're going around, somebody's trying to block their vision. So it's frustrating. So what happens is it causes frustration which causes a neurochemical or a, a neurotransmitter dump of acetylcholine, uh, epinephrine, and dopamine, which helps you learn skill. So what I do is I do that drill at the beginning of my lift or any session to turn their brain on. I've had kids that have had concussions in the past get sick because of doing this drill. But what it does, then I back them down, I have them go slower, and they then, and I'm telling you, this was a summer where Have I've, you ever been able to use it to like, you've probably had a brain injury that we didn't know about? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Because if there's something not wired in the brain. So look, everything's going on so fast in that drill. There's so much information going in the brain. If there's something not wired correctly, yeah. It, it's going to It's going to let you know. So, and, and when I say that, I probably did 50 athletes and there was four that showed up. Had a little nauseousness when they did the drill, literally by the second rep, I do like three to five reps and then boom, we go left. And it's just rapid fire, these things. So, and you can tell, and my best athletes do it the best and they separate themselves, but everybody gets better because I think it kind of helps rewire everything And your, so then they turn on those, those neurotransmitters show up in the brain because you did this drill that's really hard. You did math, <laughs> right? You did it all. And then what happens is when you go lift, now that you release these neurochemicals, lifting strength is a skill. So you get faster or stronger and fa- or faster, whatever you're training that day, better. It's a brain affecting drill that gets your brain ready to go to perform whatever skill. And you just do it as a warm up quickly. And, it, and, it, and you can't do one without the other. Like it has to be body and brain at the same time. If they aren't connected, you got problems. I mean, I, running's a series of reflexes. And I actually, I don't know them all, but when, when someone's running, it's a series of reflexes. The stumble reflex, okay, upper body, lower body. So you know, when you're talking about athletes, you're talking about, hey, a guy's using his legs, but he's not bringing his upper body when he's throwing like the way he should. There might be a disconnect, there's a reflex there. Mm. Okay, so and, and I know like, um, so this drill makes my athletes look a lot more athletic, especially the ones that weren't. I've done it the whole summer. My pros, because I train yeah. a number of pros to f- college freshmen, so there's a broad span there. And I'm telling you, it is a game changer 
on how fast. How long are you you doing it? For? They they just do one rep or I'll have them go through that figure eight two reps so it takes them probably six seven seconds that's it and then so in the beginning of my workout they do that once then they go run a short sprint and they do they come back to this goat drill when they're resting so they do it when they're resting but they're running fast but I do five six reps I'm telling you try it here you yeah, can do it yeah, in here yeah yeah take a look at it on my YouTube page the goat performance drill it's it, and I did two part series so then the other thing I added was like I the target that you're looking at, I actually, you can put it on a swing. So it's swinging because I, I was looking at like, um, in the video, I actually showed another YouTube video of a hawk where they got like a piece of prey and they're moving the hawk around and the head just stays still in the whole body. So, and I, and I got it from Chris Corfus, obviously a good friend of mine. I, I wrote some books with him. We were talking how our dogs are running through the woods, chasing animals. And their heads stay. And their heads stay on like the like gimbal. And, and the dog is jumping over branches and he's never, and underneath branches and over and I'm like, that's that's crazy how athletic that is. Yeah. We're really low on the totem pole as far as species. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, we, we're pretty diverse. Yeah, or even our freakiest freaks the, aren't a house cat. The specialty, they're not. <laughs> right? Like a house cat can stand there or, or a lion can jump like 10 feet it's in the air. Really, yeah, right? Like you're just like, okay. But, but you see, my point with that whole drill is it's a brain drill that turns things on. And I'm thinking older populations if you can just keep doing that even what even what even walking walking will, i mean does it scale all the way all the way the original was walking from the infinity trails now i've had friends of mine had a two athletic parents daughter was taller kind of uncoordinated started doing the infinity walks and then with the tennis ball around their waist watching tv as a seven-year-old and then reading the subtitles because they didn't want her, you know, they're like, oh, just okay. being good parents, watching her. She read why she did the walking. And in about two months, they were like, something clicked because she was so much more athletic. Even pe other people knew it because there was just like a disconnect between her right and left hemisphericity of her brain. Yeah. So I tell you what, it's a powerful tool. So was, so just you, you ended up seeing the infinity walk and that clicked enough of logic for you. Yes. So you're like, we should try it. Well, and then we could add it on steroids. And, oh, and you've just been allowed to experiment on kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, for, for every, decades. as a friend of mine said, man, every workout's a biological experiment if yeah. you really treat it that way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things I've always loved about you is that the passion is performance enhancing for, yeah. for athletes and finding these tools and everything yeah. you can, whereas you've always, you're more scientist than you are meathead. Oh, well, yes, yes. I I would agree. I mean, I'm looking at numbers. Like, I don't necessarily, like, I, I don't set a hard, people say, well, did you do this for the experience? I'm like, no, I just tested these numbers, and this is, so I'm kind of a meathead scientist. That works. Right, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not a hard scientist, no. No, right? you're not but, tracking every variable. And no, because these scientists, even the sports scientists are like, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but sure. you've never coached anybody. No, but at some point, good, better, or worse. Right. Did we get better? Did I produce a world champ? Did I produce an Olympic champ? Did we get what we needed to do do we set a lifetime PR right that's the